Hey guys, so I'm sharing my two week postpartum update featuring baby king. Um, he does not want me to put him down, so he will probably be in this whole video, but that's okay because hey, mom life. So um, yeah, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my, um, well, I'm gonna give you guys an update on my uh, C-section healing, my incision. I'm gonna show my stomach and just kind of talk about a few of the things that I've been going through these past couple of weeks um, as far as um, having a baby, like having just had a baby. I don't know how to explain this, y'all. I'm kind of, I'm not tired, but I'm, I don't know like it's I had pregnancy brain and I think like it just extends into like mom life because for some reason I can't remember what I'm trying to say I can't remember words like child is a whole mess but anyway let me get started with this update so I'm looking at my phone because that's where I have like the notes that I've been taking to make sure that I said everything for this video um, but the first thing that I wanted to talk about is after having a c-section the first week is by far like the hardest week of your life um not only are you trying to adjust to a new baby but you're also healing like a c-section is a major surgery and i don't think that this is explained enough to people i don't think that people truly understand that a c-section is major surgery and so because of that the recovery it's it's as if you had a, a legitimate surgery so it's important to um take it easy and to take care of yourself but sometimes that can be hard because you have someone that needs you um and so uh, when when you when you're going through that like i just i i just i'm not gonna lie the first week is, is pretty tough um you're tired you're sore you're swollen you're trying to walk around like there's all kind of things and i mean i'm a first time mom so i don't i don't even know what i would do if i had another kid that i had to watch at the same time it just seems like it would be really really um exhausting for lack of better words um but yeah so i will say that like the first week afterwards is pretty difficult but like here are some things that i think might help so i know that really wasn't much insight but i'm just gonna like run down all the random things that i've been thinking and it, whatever order it happens it just happens um but so the next thing that i wanted to say is that after um probably like after five days, I was able to wear normal clothes. Um, now, normal is very subjective because honestly, I'm I'm wearing sweatpants and like tank tops. I'm really not trying that hard when it comes to getting dressed because why? Like he's just gonna throw up on me or pee on me or something crazy. So I don't really need to be like full blown, you know, dressed to the nines right now. But um, I was able to fit into my clothes. And um, when I went to my, I had a one week appointment um, I had lost 18 pounds, so that was really exciting. Um, I think over my whole pregnancy, I gained, I want to say 35 pounds. So I've lost 18 pounds, which is great. But one thing that I will say is that it's so easy when you're pregnant um, or like after you have the baby, like to look in the mirror and be like, what the heck is this? Um, because I had that moment. Like I, I literally had a moment where like after I delivered the baby, I had gone to the bathroom, I looked in the mirror and I was like, what's going on? I want to challenge you to create a mantra before you get to that stage. Um, so when I look in the mirror now, I smile at myself and I tell myself, wow, like you're a superhero um, because I am a superhero. Like it go, going through nine months of pregnancy, being sick, going through, you know, I, I went through labor um, and then I had a C-section um, like going through all that. Like we are freaking powerhouses and superheroes. And so it's important to um, love our bodies and not get kind of caught up in the whole, oh, I need a snap back real quick. It's really not that deep. Um, and also like it can be really discouraging and i think that's what leads to um you know or that's something that can lead to postpartum depression if you're not careful so um i just challenge you to like create some kind of mantra that you can start saying to yourself so that you don't fall into that rabbit hole of you know looking in the mirror and being like i mean for lack of a better word just freaking out like i kind of like had like a freak out moment while i looked in the mirror because i was like oh my gosh like i still look pregnant like i, st I still looked pregnant you know the the next day and of course you're gonna look pregnant still, like you just had the baby. So, um, but anyway, what I do now is um, every time I walk past the mirror or every time I look in the mirror, I smile at myself and I tell myself, girl, you are a superhero because I am. So, um, so yeah, just create a mantra because things are not gonna look the same. Things aren't going to be the same so quickly. And yes, you are gonna lose quite a bit of weight probably when you first um, have your baby, but like, 
it's not a race. It's not a race to, you know, get back to pre-pregnancy weight or to be skinny or anything. It's not a race. Take your time, honor your body, love your body for what it's been able to do for you these last eight, nine, ten months, you know, and, and just give yourself um, some grace. And I think that'll make your, your uh, postpartum recovery a little bit better. So also after my C-section, I um, I had um, gestational hypertension. So basically I just had high blood pressure. Um, and I had it towards the end of my pregnancy. And something that I noticed is that even after my C-section, after the delivery and everything, I was still swollen up like a sausage. My feet were so swollen I couldn't wear shoes. My legs were so swollen it was ridiculous. My hands were swollen. Um, I'm still, I'm, I'm two weeks postpartum now, and I'm still experiencing um, tingling in my fingers um so uh one thing i'll say is that it does kind of take some time like I've no i'm noticing that it's taking some time for me to kind of get back to normal uh luckily i think around day nine my feet stopped swelling which thank god oh my oh, gosh swollen feet is just the worst um <laughs> but so around day nine my feet stopped swelling at one week my legs had stopped swelling um, my hands are no longer swollen, but I am still experiencing some tingling, but um, you know, I'm sure that's going to go away hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And speaking of having gestational hypertension, my blood pressure is now back to normal. Um, I haven't had any issues. Um, I don't even know what happened because I went through my whole pregnancy totally fine. And then probably around week 35 or 34, all of a sudden I had high blood pressure. So i um, not really sure what that's about, but one thing that I have been really big on uh, my entire pregnancy and especially now is drinking a lot of water um, just to flush my system out because with a c-section I was on tons of medication um, you know they gave me tons of um, drugs via my IV and stuff and then the medicine that you take when you go home uh, for pain management and stuff like that you know I just really um, have been adamant about making sure that I'm flushing my system out like I need to so um, I think drinking water definitely helped uh, reduce all the swelling um, and I I mean, even though I'm still feeling a little bit of tingling in my fingers, it's it's not nearly as bad as it was before. So I'm I'm thinking that the water is actually helping with that also. So um so yeah, that's just another note. But I no longer have high blood pressure, which I'm so thankful for because they put me on blood pressure medication. I was just like, oh, I don't want to take this stuff. So. I'm glad that I've gotten that down and it's been two weeks, so it's perfect. So speaking of uh, medications and stuff, when you leave the um, hospital, they give you um, pain medication uh, because I mean, a C-section, you're gonna have some residual pain afterwards. Um, and so, <laughs> and so, um, I had Percocet and I had um, ibuprofen that, that I was given and I think I took it for about nine days before I no longer needed the pain meds anymore. Um, now I'll take a Tylenol here or there if I'm like feeling a little bit of cramping maybe uh, but for the most part I, I haven't had to take anything in the last few days which I'm really glad about because one thing I will say is that the Percocet actually made me very sleepy so um which was very hard when i'm trying to breastfeed because um apparently i didn't know this but breastfeeding makes you sleepy too so i'm breastfeeding and i'm taking percocet which is also making me sleepy and it just was not good for business like i was like knocked out trying to breastfeed so <laughs> so yeah i'm so glad that i'm not having to take the medicine anymore because um and 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 that also means that i'm feeling better right so after those nine days like physically i'm not feeling pain i'm not feeling like you know completely terrible so I'm, I'm just really glad that that whole situation is over because i'm not gonna lie the like i said at the beginning that first week was rough like i i was getting sleep um and that's something else i wanted to share like i was getting sleep there was you know there was no problem but the pain like the cramping because your, your uterus has to um shrink back to size and you know your organs are moving back into place and stuff like all of that stuff hurts your incision area that can be a little bit painful um and when i say painful it's like tenderness and cramping and um you know your body is tired like even if you're not mentally tired your body is tired and that's one thing that i realized there's like a distinction between my body being physically tired and my mind being you know like i'm on 10 like oh my gosh i'm a mom like this is great you know but um one thing that my doctor reminded me is that even when you start physically feeling better, it's important to still take it easy because you did just have a major surgery. Um, and so one thing I realized a few days ago, I made a mistake. I was feeling great. I was feeling like on cloud nine. I was, you know, 
physically I felt great, mentally I felt great. So I decided I was gonna all of a sudden clean my house. Why did I do that? First off, I don't clean my house when I'm not, you know, when I didn't have a kid and when I wasn't pregnant, let alone after a major surgery. <laughs> so I decided to clean my house. Well, I decided to clean a couple of rooms in my house. And um, that night I was just like in pain. And, and I realized at that point, what my doctor was trying to say like you may think that you're feeling fine but your body is still healing and trying to recover so it's very important no matter at what time to take it easy at least up until you have your six week appointment so from here on out i'm definitely not going to be doing all that extra i'm gonna you know dial it back a bit because your girl was just doing too much so something that i haven't heard many people or really anybody talk about is muscle weakness I have been experiencing so much muscle weakness, it's ridiculous. I'm talking, like, not just my stomach. Like, of course your stomach is going to experience some weakness because you've been pregnant all this time. So your your abs are, you know, shot to, to hell, basically. But, man, nobody talked about, like, the weakness that you can have in your butt and your thighs and your arms. Like, I feel overall, like, a genuine muscle weakness. Um, a few, a couple of days ago, so we're at, I'm at day 14 or 15 right now. And so, um, probably 10 days at postpartum, that's when I finally started not feeling as weak. Um, but even still like sitting down, I don't know why sitting is like causing me so much stress, but sitting down, like just sitting regularly causes me, a, was causing me a lot of stress, but now everything's a lot better. But I, I just wanted to kind of mention that muscle weakness is, is something that you can probably experience as a result of having a C-section. I'm not sure if it happens when you have a vaginal delivery, but I definitely know with a C-section, at least for me, I was experiencing muscle weakness and it, I, nobody could have prepared me for that because like literally you know I'm like holding on to rails and holding on to walls and stuff trying to figure out how I'm gonna get up because I was so weak I was so yeah it's it's insane so I think I talked about tenderness around my incision um now I just I don't feel much tenderness um it actually kind of feels numb I don't really feel much of anything around my incision area uh I from what I've heard from my husband and from doctors and nurses my incision looks really good I have no idea I try not to really um look at it and the reason why I have my husband look at it but I don't look at it because I don't want to obsess about it for lack of like I can't think of a better way to say it but I I'm someone that can easily obsess about things and so I just know that if I'm looking at it I'm gonna obsess about it and I'm I have so many things to think about right now that I really don't need to be obsessing about something that is um is a natural process and that I'm, I'm healing so I, I have my husband check it just to make sure that like it's healing properly and that there's no problems but um I don't spend time looking at it because I know that I'm gonna be like okay you know why hasn't it you know change colors or whatever it's supposed to I don't know what it's supposed to do but I don't want to obsess about it so I'm not looking at it but I will say that um I'm not feeling any pain around my incision anymore, which is really awesome. But I touched on this before about movement and like moving around and stuff. One thing I will say I think really has helped my recovery is the fact that I've been moving. Um, so you are advised to move around and to, you know. <laughs> so you are advised to like move around and um, be like like walk okay so i live in an apartment everything's on on one floor and so um when i was in the hospital i got up immediately like as soon as they took the catheter out of me i got up and i was walking around and um you know trying to be active um and when i came home i still continue to do the same thing so i have been able to move around my movement hasn't been um my movement was difficult at the beginning um because when you're first getting up child it feel like oh gosh it just it doesn't feel very good to try to get up not to mention my bed is really high um it's like it's not a low bed at all so it that didn't help i had to actually get a step stool um to step up into my bed um and then also rolling over is is still even at 14 days postpartum rolling over is still a challenge um lifting myself up like if i'm laying down and coming up that's still a challenge so usually i will um and i can't really show but i'll usually like use my hands and like brace myself on the bed 
to kind of roll and push myself up. It's a whole long drawn out process. Um, but one thing I've been also doing is propping myself up on pillows to make it a little bit easier for me to get up and down um, the way that I need to. But I will say that my movement since having the C-section has significantly in um, significantly increased or like gotten better since then. Um, I still have a, a tough time if I'm sitting down like this. If I'm sitting down like this and then I go to stand up that's still a bit of a challenge and i think that that's tied into the muscle weakness that i was talking about like my thighs are weak my butt is weak my core is weak i you know so it's not um as easy for me to get up anymore and i don't know why i didn't think that this was a thing like i don't know why i didn't I, it just never crossed my mind that getting up could be a challenge um but it, it's definitely better than it was at the beginning so i'm not going to complain about it but I think that's something that to keep in mind is that it could be a little bit of a challenge to like get up and down and do kind of the normal moves that you would be doing but again i'm only two weeks postpartum um it's, it's six weeks for recovery so we still got some time to like figure this out so my bleeding that i've been experiencing has been very light um it was light when i was in the hospital um i I'm, i wasn't bleeding very heavy like i thought i would and it's it's actually interesting because uh with my period i am actually a heavy bleeder so i was expecting that after the baby i would bleed heavy but i have not been bleeding heavy at all and actually um if i didn't want to i don't i wouldn't have to wear an actual pad i could wear a panty liner and get away with it um but i wear a pad anyway just in case because i'm like maybe one day i'll just start you know going back to my heavy flow or something um so i'm, I'm wearing the pads but um but yeah my, my bleeding has been really light which has been great um and i'm still bleeding um it's more so spotting now but um I'm still bleeding 14 postpartum. Something else that I have seen, I think nobody talk about except for maybe like in blogs is vaginal itching. Now I experienced vaginal itching um, probably for like four or five days uh, after my C-section. So, um, and I, I asked about it and basically the doctor told me that it's because, um, you know, everything's coming out of me. like. All the blood that's coming out and stuff like so i was like okay but it's really intense <laughs> for lack of better words so i was using um the peri bottle to um to wipe as, as my, what i was using to wipe um and but I, one thing i will say is very important to at least for me is to not stick anything up there i think in my entire life i've only had one yeast infection um and so i will say that i guess the vaginal itching kind of feels like you have a yeast infection I actually thought that maybe I had gotten a yeast infection and especially since I haven't had a period in you know nine plus months I was like okay you know it might make sense that maybe I'm getting a yeast infection um you know after giving birth but it you know I found out that I did not have a yeast infection so I didn't use anything to um like treat it you know or whatever but what I did do um that I found very helpful and after a couple of days the itching went away um at night I would sleep without a pad um no underwear no pad i'll put a towel on the bed um i'll put a sheet and a towel on the bed um and i would just let like just kind of free flow um now again i I'm, I'm not bleeding heavy so it's not like there's you know tons of blood all over the place like there was I, the first day i woke up there was very little the second day i woke up there was none um so it wasn't really a big deal for me to lay in the bed with no underwear on um but uh you know so if you are a heavier bleeder you know maybe of course either way speak with the doctor but i'm it's just really interesting that i never heard people talk about a possibly having vaginal itch i don't know if it's that's like embarrassing to people or what but it's just something that i experienced if nobody else experiences it cool i highly doubt it but it is what it is okay, so the last thing i want to talk about is my breastfeeding experience so far in these last couple of weeks okay the first week of breastfeeding trash <laughs> throw the whole breast away throw the whole mom away because i was not feeling it honey i so many times i told my husband i hope I, well i don't gotta say my husband y'all know tay but um so many times i told tay i'm not gonna do this anymore i'm done like i'm not breastfeeding anymore because man were my breasts hurting i experienced engorgement oh my gosh it was just it was such a headache okay um but now 14 days in um, I'm still experiencing like a little bit of pain when he first latches on at least for like the first 10 seconds I feel like um maybe some pressure I have a really fast letdown um so like literally once he latches on good and does a couple sucks both of my breasts let down um 
and after my breast after i had that letdown my breast feels so much better but up until i my letdown like actually happens oh my gosh i i just feel so much pressure but um i will say that i guess i'm getting used to it or my body's getting used to it whatever because i'm not experiencing like the pain that i was experiencing before um so now it's just a matter of me making sure that he's latching properly because if your baby doesn't latch properly that can cause you some pain um and like there there's no pain like a baby latching onto just the nipple um so i know that lactation consultants they recommend that the baby um latch on to your full like to your areola like their whole areola should be in their mouth but there's no way my breasts are big um i'm like i'm a double d probably bigger now since i've had the baby but um so i'm a double d and i have a um protruding nipple i don't know how else you define it but like my nipple sticks out right and so um and, but then my areola it's huge i can't stick that in my baby's mouth like he would choke if i stick the whole thing in his mouth so i don't i just try to make sure that my full nipple is in there and like you know that he's covering a little bit you know a decent amount of my areola and that's how i know that he's latching really good um i pay attention to like how he sucks so and, and i can tell like if he's on there or not um now so i mean it's really cool how it's only been two weeks but i've figured out so many different things about him specifically him and, and and our relationship so um so i'm really excited about that but yeah breastfeeding so far has been going really great um and the only reason why i said that the first week is trash is because i hear so many people like share that like oh breastfeeding is so great blah 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 but like it's not always peaches and roses like i I didn't experience that in the beginning like in the beginning I was just like no and then also um and I'll do a breastfeeding video but in the beginning um I wasn't sure that he was actually getting any milk so um you know because at the beginning it's just the colostrum and it if you don't see it you don't think they're getting it but he was getting it so you know that made me feel so much better when I realized that he was like gaining weight and all that kind of stuff like he's supposed to but initially I didn't know that it was actually working or whatever and so uh that also had me like a little bit discouraged but um one thing i will say when it comes to breastfeeding is that if you keep doing it it gets better now for some people it may not like i know there are some people out there that um you know maybe you have inverted nipples maybe there's like maybe you just have some kind of issue or whatever and it may not get better for you or whatever or it may still be difficult for you but I think that if you try to stick with it a little bit like just don't give up too early or too fast um because i i do think that some of the problems kind of work itself out once you and your baby get into a groove um and i think that me and king have gotten into a really good groove now and um even though it's sometimes a little painful i'm, I'm still able to like tough it out and and it's still so far it's been like a really great experience so since i'm talking about king i wanted to give like a quick update on him in these past two weeks so he was born at five pounds 15 and a half ounces at his one week appointment he was six pounds one ounce and at his two week appointment he was um eight pounds two ounces so he is growing so good i'm so proud of him like i just feel so good um he has been um breastfeeding very well he's been um you know wetting diapers like he should um having bowel movements like he should um he was born with a little bit of jaundice and um his jaundice is is clearing up that's why we've been going to the doctor every week for them to check his jaundice um and this week actually we finally noticed that it was it was actually going away so i'm really happy about that oh he sleeps really well like oh my goodness i i people are always asking me like oh how are you feeling whatever whatever i feel great because he sleeps good and i sleep with him so it's not a big deal. like actually i should be sleeping right now because usually i sleep when he's sleeping but it's not a big deal i wanted to record this video but um he sleeps so well which i'm so grateful for um and the only kind of not downside but the only thing that um i'm experiencing right now is that he likes to be held a lot like if i put him down right now he'll wake up um and so i'm still working on that we have a really amazing swing that i've been using that i've been able to put him in and that gives me some hands-free time and then also i have a um what do you call those things like those little wraps or whatever so i can baby wear so that's been really exciting so i haven't had to like hold him like this as much um but i have been um baby wearing him and i have been putting him in the swing but he definitely likes to be held which i'm so happy about because 
I mean, he's a baby. He's not going to be a baby forever. So I'm just going to enjoy all this because, I mean, one day he's probably not going to want to hug me. Well, he's going to always want to hug me. But, you know, one day I might have to beg for him to hug me instead of him just, you know, wanting to be on me. So that's really nice. Um, He also eats a lot. Um, I am eating on demand right now. I'm not doing the whole um, every two hours thing. I don't have time for all that. Um, so whenever he gives me the cues, whenever he starts like sucking or like making noises or when, if he starts like not reaching towards me because he's not actually reaching towards me, but like if we're laying down, he'll like slide towards me or something. Um, I will just whip it out and give him some milk because I'm right now I just don't have time to, well, I, I have time, but right now I don't want to, um, I don't want to make him stretch, I guess, in between feedings if he's actually hungry. So I am feeding him on demand. Um, and I have noticed that he eats a lot, um, especially because in one week he gained two pounds. Um, so I, I feel like he's eating very well um, for two weeks old. He's just so perfect, like, uh, -uh I love him. <laughs> but yes, so that's really it with my um, two week postpartum update. Um, I am going to show you guys my stomach. Um, of course I can't do it right now because I'm holding him, but I will like insert a clip so that you guys can see what I'm looking like two weeks postpartum. But honestly, I'm feeling great. Like I am so grateful for how, um, things are looking as far as like my progress um since having him um i i feel really good right now and i literally have no complaints um my incision like i said before my incision is healing really well so yeah like everything so far is going really good um i haven't had like any traumatic moments or whatever like you know as far as like physically of how i'm feeling or anything like that so that's really good um but yeah so that is pretty much all that I have for my um, postpartum update for two weeks. Um, I'll probably do another one maybe at six weeks or after my six week appointment or, you know, maybe at like two months or something. I'm not sure. But I might do another update uh, just to let you guys know like what my progress is at that point. Um, but yeah, those are like the big things um, that have been going on since I've had Baby King. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, subscribe and click the bell below to get notifications of when I'm doing new videos because I'm actually gonna try to be more consistent. Um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of um, motherhood, lifestyle, and entrepreneurship videos. So if you wanna see those, definitely give me a subscribe. So until next time, I will talk to y'all later.